All right, well, we're, today we're going to talk about absolute value inequalities. Uh, this lesson is basically designed for someone who's probably seen them before, but uh, it's been a while, so I'm just going to go through the basics of how to set them up and how to organize them, not so deep into, okay, this is the solution. And when we talk about absolute value inequalities, specifically here, I'm going to talk about solving them as opposed to setting them up and whatnot. Now, in order to really get into it, we need to have a quick review of what absolute value itself means. Absolute value is essentially distance uh, without direction, and this is the straight up and down lines, and in your mind you're going to have to pretend that these are straight up and down, um, would represent absolute value. When I'm talking about absolute value, I'm talking about, say I go three miles from some point, and I go east, or west in that case, and then I go three miles east. Uh, the car that I go in, per, say I'm in a car, uh, the car that I go in has no idea what direction I went, just how far that I went. So it thinks I'm in the same place if I go to the east side or if I go to the west side. Now, if there's a GPS in there, the GPS can tell it, but on its own has no idea. It just knows three miles have been driven, and that's pretty much it. So we're going to adjust for that a little bit. In terms of what we're using it for, um, when we get into like algebra, algebra 2, that kind of thing, we're dealing with more of, well, is there a value of x that I can say is less than 4? So I'm looking for a range of values, essentially, that if I pop in an absolute, I pop them into this absolute value setup, it will give me a number that is less than 4. So you're not getting a single number, necessarily. You're getting a group of numbers that I can plug all in there. So numbers less than 4, you, you know, 1 is less than 4, 2 is less than 4. So they, there's more than one value. So we're going to end up graphing it on a number line. And we'll, I'll show that in just a minute. But the, I wanted to talk about the idea of how to set up the two parts first. So I've got the absolute value uh, is less than 4. So one of my components, I'm just going to say, yeah, I'll positive x's that are less than 4, I can plug in there and uh, get a number that gives me an absolute value that's less than 4. So that's a, a group that I can get. Also, um, and, you know, negative values will tend to go that way as well, up into a certain point. So I need to lock myself in. So the other side of it is I'm going to look for x's and use the opposite direction. So instead of going east, I'm going west here and getting negative 4. But I need to make an adjustment for the less than. So think about when you drive down a street. Say you're driving down, and there's like a McDonald's on the left side of the street. If you're driving the opposite direction, that McDonald's goes on the right. So instead of doing less than for the second one, I'm going to do greater than. So there's two parts to it. Number one, you need to change the sign. And then you also need to flip that inequality over. So this would give me a range of data. So anything less than 4 and anything greater than negative 4 will give me an absolute value uh, that's less than 4. And we could test it. So x is less than 4 uh, between negative 4 and 4. So 2 is there. So the absolute value of 2, if I plug it in over here, gives me 2, and that is certainly less than negative 4, so that works. But w if I go outside of that grouping, say I get to 6, which would be uh, greater than 4, uh, here, 6 is not greater than 4, so that's outside of the group. And the same thing happens if it was below. If it was negative 6, the absolute value would still be 6, obviously, because uh, you still moved 6 spots, even though it's in a different direction. So uh, the negative 6 the absolute value of negative 6 will pop out and give you 6 is less than 4, which is obviously not true. So we found a range of data that gives us our answer. Let's skip all the rest of the talk and get right into what they look like and how you solve them. And then also how you graph them on a number line. So this is a good example. This is a one-step absolute value inequality. You have um, R is the absolute value of r is less than 9. So my two problems are going to be r is less than 9 and r is greater than negative 9. So the nice thing is I don't solve anything here. It's done. So what I'm going to do is graph it on a number line. I need to go to the two points, 9 and negative 9, and I'm going to make a circle there. Once I have those, I'm going to look at them one at a time. I see that this is a less than sign, and it is not a less than or equal to sign. If it was, if it's less than or equal to, I need to fill in this circle. If it's open, if there's no underline here, I'm going to leave it open. The reason that's the case, by the way, is because if it's equal to, it's included in the solution set. But if not, um, it's not included. So it's not like when somebody does a, a when they determine your property lines at your house, they may draw a dotted line. Well, they do it to save money, most likely. But at the main time, also, it's truer because you don't really own that line, and neither does your neighbor. It's where the middle is. It's kind of this you know, zone that doesn't exist. So when it's an open circle, it acts as a limit. 
where if it's filled in, it acts as a part of the solution set. So, for instance, say we chose 9 itself. Well, we would be saying that uh, the absolute value of 9 is less than 9. And then we'd be saying that 9 is less than 9. It's not. It's the same. So unless we had this in it, we can't include 9. But we do want to set it as a limit, so we leave it open. So if you see a line underneath, fill it in. If no line, leave it open. So from here, I'm going to graph it in a certain direction. Always read them from the variable first, no matter what side the variable is on. R is less than 9, so you go where numbers are less than 9, and 8 is less than 9, and so is 6 and 4. I'm going to start doing this. On the opposite side, I'm dealing with R is greater, so I don't need to fill this in, because it's a limit and not a part of the set, to negative 9, so I'm going to go up. So I tend to get this barbell of data. So anything, any one of these in here that I plug in will give me something less than 9. If I plug in negative 2, the absolute value is 2, so 2 is less than 9. If I plug in positive 4, 4 is less than 9, so that also meets the criteria. I start going out here. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. Well, that's not less than 9, so it all tends to work that way. And what I was saying about uh, graphing it from the variable instead of the other way around, this means the exact same thing as this one up here. So some of you may have seen before, like, draw the way the arrow points. It doesn't work unless the variable is on the left. So unless you can justify every single time the variable on the left, you need to start doing it this way. Since r is next to the little end, it's less. r is next to the little end, it's less. r is next to the big end, it's greater. So that tends to be how you set that up. Uh, from here, you go into more advanced versions of them. This is a, and I'm not going to solve a ton of these. I'm just going to set them up, and you could solve them yourself because they're like one-step equations. In this case, I'm dealing with x is less than, uh, x over 6, I'm sorry, x divided by 6, is greater than or equal to 5, and then I keep the absolute part, otherwise it's not absolute, change the 5, and then I also need to flip over that inequality. So in order to solve this, I need to multiply by 6 x is greater than or equal to 30. On the other side, multiply by 6, x is uh, less than or equal to negative 30. Now in this case, you uh, go up to 30, and it's got a line underneath it, so I'm going to fill it in because it's part of the answer, and it says x is greater than, so it goes up. On the opposite side, negative 30, fill it in, it says less than, so I'm going to go this way. So really, in absolute value inequalities, you only have two basic graphs. You've got the barbell style, or you've got the arrows facing opposite. Now, the, the circles may be filled or unfilled, but in general, those are your two options that you have. That's one step. So I'm going to probably solve one more, and from there on, I'm just going to set them up. So this one I do want to solve because it makes an important point somewhere, and I found out that there might be one more that sets up an important point. So I may have lied when I said one more. So I set this one up less than 64, less than equal to 64. Then I do the op the other one, which is keep the absolute part, flip the inequality, change the sign. So from here, I need to subtract 6 from both sides. These cancel, bring down negative 10. I mean, I know you know this part, most likely. Um, so I'm going to divide by negative 10. And here's the deal. I'm dividing by a negative 10, which means I need to flip the inequality over. If you divide by negative in the last step, this needs to flip. n is greater than or equal to, uh, I think it ends up being 5 and 4 fifths, something like that. On the other side, you subtract 6, gives you negative 70, negative 10n. I'm going to divide by negative 10. Same basic thing here. This flips over n. Uh, this is 7. And instead of being greater than, it becomes less than n is less than 7. So I can graph them. The big issue I wanted to, ex to go over one more time is if you divide by negative in the last step, it flips. So uh, here I'll, I'll do 7, and I'll fill it in. n is next to little n, so it's less, so it's going to be this way. And if I go to 5 and 4 fifths or whatever it happens to be, and I realize now that this is supposed to be positive 58, so this should be negative 5 and 4 fifths. I wonder why I looked like this. Um, sorry about that, but... Uh, at least I fixed it before I put it up, right? So somewhere in here, and it's going to be filled in, and n is greater than that number. So I'm kind of in that general vicinity in terms of solving. The other type of thing that you need to deal with sometimes when you have absolute value inequalities is what happens if there's crap on the outside? The only part that's absolute is in the absolute value. The problem is you have to solve this one before you can break it into parts. So I have 4 times the absolute value of 3b minus 10 is less than 112. Well, I need to get this by itself. It's almost like this says 4x is equal to is less than 112. 
in order to get, you would think maybe that, oh, I'm going to distribute, right? So I'll just do 4 times 3 and then 4 times negative 10. That's not what you need to do here. What you need to do here is get rid of that 4 because if you start distributing it, that 3b minus 10 is no longer absolute. So it needs to stay until you're ready to use it. So instead, I'm going to divide the whole thing by 4. It gives me 3b minus 10 and then 112, and I'm trying to do it in my head, and it's, it's a really stupid process. 20, 8. So 3b minus 10 is less than uh, 28 is basically where I'm going. And I'm, I'm going to worry about this forever, so I'm just going to do this really fast. Yeah, I'm good. So it's 28. Uh, from here, you can split it into 3b minus 10 is less than 28. 3b minus 10 is greater than negative 28. So from there, the split is exactly the same. Um, this one is uh, basically the same thing, but once again, you have to make sure that you get the absolute part to be absolute. So I have 5 minus 4 times the absolute value of 10v minus 10 is greater than negative 115. This is one of the longer ones. Once again, I can't combine these together, or I can't distribute. I also can't combine these together because the 4 is being multiplied here. So it means it's off limits. It's almost like saying 5 minus 4 times the quantity. So I can't do that yet. Instead, I need to get rid of the 5 in the same way I would do it if it was a standard equation. So I subtract 5 and end up with negative 4 times the absolute value of 10v minus 10 uh, is greater than negative 120. From here, I still need to get the absolute value by itself, so I'm going to get rid of times negative 4, and I'm going to do it by dividing. The thing is, kind of like if this was an x, if I'm dividing by it before, I need to flip the inequality over. So since this is negative, not this, not the answer, because it's not, um, I need to flip it over. So I end up with 30 here, but this needs to flip. Now because I'm changing the perspective by dividing by a negative here. Now I can break it into 10v minus 10 is less than 30, 10v minus 10 is greater than negative 30, and I can split it out and get to my graph. But that's kind of how it goes. Those are the long and the shorts of how you get from one point to another in terms of absolute value inequalities. So uh, I hope it's helpful to you, and if it's not, I'm really sorry. I've got some other videos on it. So uh, good luck.